cannot fight these grievances by pleading for their rectification. You can only do so by getting to the root cause of the problem. And that's the, 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 uh, the problem of power. But at that point, you were firmly committed to achieving power through the ballot box. Yes, through the ballot box, that's at right. At what stage did you very first consider that it might be necessary, in your view, to use a gun? To use petrol bombs as far back as 1960, and we were the first to use them, but purely as a means of pressure, not really to try and destroy life, but to intimidate um, the authorities into conceding, as it were, to our wishes. Did it, work? it didn't work. Then we had um, demonstrations and uh, strikes. She participated in one of the most, uh, best organized demonstrations in the country, the women's demonstration. Thousands of them were sent to prison in Salisbury and thousands sent to prison in, in Bulawayo and Guelo and Umtali in 1961. It must be a terrible responsibility to have to bear, to know that you were instrumental in starting a war. I mean, however just you feel a conflict to be. No, 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 no. You said that I, I didn't feel any conflict at all. I felt justified. There was the whole history of our having tried non-violent methods. They had failed completely. And um, neither the uh, settler regime nor Britain heeded our cries. They just uh, uh, wouldn't move. They wouldn't yield an inch. And so we decided. Um, without any uh, qualms about it, that armed struggle would uh, be the right thing. Fighting a war, which is a very difficult one, but in spite of the difficulties posed by the enemy, we take care not to make people unnecessarily suffer. But I quote from your own publications, Zimbabwe News, all land to the tillers, socialism now, you have to hit a racist settler in the groin and skull hard, very hard, very, very hard, before you can get him to scream those words. That's what we proposed, that's what we will continue to do till final victory. Let us never forget that only a dead imperialist is a good one. Now is that the kind of language that's likely to make soldiers behave responsibly? This is only a dramatic way of saying we are waging a struggle to overthrow the settler system. It does not literally mean that uh, we go all out to destroy the whites. No, we are fighting a just war aimed at the overthrow of the settler government which is presently oppressing our people. As you see, I wonder whether language like that might not incite young men to commit the most appalling acts within the conflict. No one is fighting an individual war. All our fighters are fighting collectively under a command that, that derives its authority from the Central Committee. This question has been asked before, and I think what people would want to know is whether those who have committed genocide and massacres uh, will become our friends tomorrow. I don't know what uh, the Allies would have answered if, the, if a qu similar question had been asked in 1945-1946 whether Hitler and Mussolini would become the allies of Churchill and uh, Roosevelt. Um, our answer is that those who are architects of this genocide and massacres surely must, on uh, the basis of moral and uh, legal principles, be brought to trial. But this does not mean that the followers, the ordinary person, must be tried. Those who have hatched the uh, plan the treason, as a result of which uh, massacres of all kinds have been perpetrated against our people and against the people of Mozambique, people of Zambia, Angola and Botswana, surely must be brought to book for their crime. It is absolutely wrong to allow a set of individuals to acquire the ownership and possession of resources which are God-given. They're not man-made. The land, the water, the forests, the animals, the fish in the river, the minerals. These are given us by nature. 
and it is in principle wrong for any one man to claim ownership of such resources. We should belong to the people as a whole.